So the next thing that I wanted to present is the glazing options for the ends of your building. Um, you'll notice that I kind of just capped this thing off with a blue surface. Um, and I'm going to just, let me see if I can control Z all the way back to the construction of that. Yeah, there we go. All right, so without actually modeling anything, I'm just gonna, you know, walk you through this step by step as I went through it. Um, basically, this surface I just created in the front view, or sorry, right view. I just pulled a surface along the whole edge of the window that I was trying to create. Um, stepping forward, I kind of put it in place in the top view so that it sat slightly inside of my roof eave. And then I trimmed it out. And then um, I noticed that in plan, I actually needed it to extend all the way to the wall. So I created a new plane, joined it and trimmed it, and then merged it, right? So that was an opportunity for me to get to a datum surface. Right, but that datum surface isn't really complete because you'll see that you know the the top side of the roof up here also needs enclosure, not the underside. If you look at the underside, I actually need to get through this because I have a stair there. So I just need to create a surface only on the top side. So what I did was um, drew a line in plan across the gap there, and then extruded that up, and then trimmed it. And then that's where it got me to here. So um, let me just go back through all the stuff that I just did with you. All right. Um, so that, that's pretty much all I did to get to this stage on my glazing, right? So I'm going to use those two surfaces in order to create the exterior environment for, um, you know, a glazed wall condition. So... Let me just grab these two and move them out. So I'll click here and I'll say negative, no, I'll just make it positive. All right, so they kind of look like this. And that's not something that you would be able to just you know, calculate or, or draw on your own, right? You have to use a subtractive process in order to extrapolate the curves in a time efficient manner, right? So that's how we got these. So anyway, um, those, those two surfaces are what I'm going to be working on. And so uh, essentially the, the, the easiest way to go about this is to say, well, I can either draw a series of lines and use sweep or extrude in order to create my, my framing elements for the glazing system. Or um, I can actually create a bunch of lines and use uh, offset or it can create a bunch of lines and create boxes with them and then use Boolean difference. So there are any number of ways of doing this, but either way you go about it, you have to use construction lines. So I'm going to uh, just go on layer five real quick and start using construction lines. So I'll make that negative five feet, get that out of the way. Um, also, did you guys notice that when I'm moving things in and out of my model, I use a numerical value? not some arbitrary number. Any of you know why? Right, precisely. So I know where to put it back. And you might visually know where exactly you want to put it back in the model, but my thought on that is why would you risk accidentally placing it on the wrong object snap when you can just move it out by a number and move it back in by a number and you know without a doubt that it is in exactly the, the same spot. So just best practices thoughts. So anyway, um, like I was saying, the, the framing elements, um, the, the, the best first step, I think, is to turn off your ISO curves and just do an extract wireframe. And that gives you your exterior curves, right? That's nothing new, I think, so far. Um, and so from that, you can uh, basically start offsetting your framework. So um, let me just select those real fast. So curve, 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 and 
curve and I'll join them and then offset them a distance of two inches. So that creates a little framework like this within which I can actually start developing a more intricate sort of framework. In fact, I don't really like two inches in this case. I think I want to use three just to exaggerate it a little bit more so you can see it. Okay. So this happens to be a really large um, window system, so I'm going to measure the distance here. Uh, it looks like it's just under 24 feet wide. So typically um, a window pane would come in, you know, a good number oftentimes is four feet. Um, it can go up to eight feet. In some cases you can get it up to 10 or 12 feet, but that usually is going to cost a lot because it has to be a really thick glass. But um, for me, I'm pretty much just going to start off by carrying an a hyperextended line like this, right? So one that just goes beyond because I don't want to worry about the actual location of it. Um, and I'll move it over. Let's see, we're at 24. I'll do six foot increments. Six feet will work fine. And then I'll copy it saying alt, alt, click, six feet. That'll do just fine. Um, and so, you know, just when I'm doing sort of an offset like this, I'm going to basically just take them all and copy it over three inches and then select them and move it back one and a half. If you have the foresight and you feel like doing the math, it's easy enough to just put it in the right location the first time. Um, but I just typically don't feel like doing the math if, if it can be avoided. So I'll do the extra step. Additionally, um, I'm going to set a vertical. Uh, let me turn near off. A vertical spacing. So I'll start off at eight feet. And copy that three inches. So for ease, because eight feet again is probably, well, copy it up and see how much we really have. All right, I'll use it. So that's that's basically, you know, setting up the framework for a glazing system. And then it's just a series of trims. So if I say, um, let me just select this all and then deselect, not the curve. Curve and curve. All right, so I deselected the surface and I do trim. So this will allow me to just go through a process of getting rid of all the extra curves. And it's a little bit laborious sometimes, but if you don't have too many of these to do, it's not so bad. can extrude them and I'll extrude it say six inches and that gets me the framework for a glazing system. So now what can be done better? Right? You oftentimes might think that you need to go through the process of creating the entire profile in order to uh, extrude, quite literally, these extrusions, right? Um, but that's not always the case. In fact, one of the easiest things you can do is before going through that whole trimming process, which is pretty laborious, as I said, 
you can actually just start trimming out of a solid panel with the trim command. So if I say, um, let me turn this on actually so you can see. Um, turn on shading. So the coolest part of this is that since I pulled a surface off and I drew curves for the profile that I need and I hyperextended them, that means that they are truly a positive geometry and I just need to select my negative geometries. If that makes sense, or if that doesn't make any sense, you'll see what it means here in a second. So um, I select all of those curves as the cutting objects and then I can select the panels to trim. Much faster, right? Now the difference though is that that created a surface rather than a profile curve and so when I do um, extrude, I need to do an extrude surface instead. So I select that, um, hit enter. You can say both sides if you want. I'm going to make it six inches again, and there it is. Now, what makes this even better is that if you didn't retain your original um, profile curve, I happen to, so it's easy to reclaim that surface, but um, what makes it even better is that you can basically at this point um, go to your glazing layer, your glass layer, and say uh, change object layer for that profile. Then do an extrude curve on your profile and say that I want this to be uh, one inch. And now you've got your glazing in there as well. Pretty sharp stuff, right? Now I can take that surface and this poly surface and move it back. Let's see, negative, I think I did 40 feet. 50 feet, I think it was actually. There we go. Pretty cool stuff, right? So now there's a little you know, problem here with this particular element. And so if you're at all confused about how that works, right, we go back to what I just discussed with your uh, sweep profile. And so we can um, rectify that very simply by um, saying intersect. And I want to intersect the roof. Sorry. Intersect the roof with the glazing that and then we can pull that off okay um, and then this is going to give us the opportunity to draw another profile around it so I can very simply just take um, one of these curves actually I could just let's see is it solid yeah I have to explode it and I'll get rid of one side Select curve to offset, I'll select that one, and this one, and this one, and fill it with a radius of zero in order to connect these two. And then to make it really clean, just draw a line in between um, the curves wherever they intersect at the frame. They might not actually show up in that location, so you'll have to figure out where they are exactly. Oh, it looks like they did that and that. Yeah, I guess they are. Okay. You can use those to trim. And then select them and say planar surface, or you could just go straight to extrude. So I'll select the surface and say extrude surface, same distance, there it is. So I'm going to move that back on to the mullions layer. I'm going to pull it back. Oh, you know what? I don't think... I might not have done that correctly, but anyway, I'm going to pull it back here. I 
might not have done that to the proper distance. Oh, project is not on. Well, it looks like I I messed up because I didn't um, I didn't move it exactly the 50 feet. I think. Yeah. So I had an error there. But um, had I done that, it would have been a little better. But anyway, you get the idea. So um, change object layer. There we go. And change this. All right, so that's how you're going to uh, get to a point where you're actually extrapolating the information you need to do um, to do a more complex sort of Mullion framing system. And so the same thing would occur right here. Um, the only difference with this one is that you'd have to go through a process of just selecting it and rotating it back into an orthogonal view like this. That way I can take it, slide it out, and start drawing on it here. So what questions do you have about that? Do you have to include that? Um, I think I will make that one a requirement, yeah. I still have to get you the write-up. I'm going to have it, have it for you guys on Monday. Um, but I think I am going to require that you have, you know, window framing elements. Uh, I'll probably ask you to do something very simple, just like a rectangle around the doors, um, if there are any. And... Uh, the stairs. We'll have to have handrails and guardrails. That's about it. Uh, so the handrail and the guardrail are the difference between uh, this and that. So the handrails down here, that's uh, 34 to 38 inches, so just call it three feet. And the guardrail is 42 inches. That one is a hard number. I would like that to be accurate. Okay. So, um, with that said, sorry, this video is like mega long now, um, but I think it's all good information. Um, I think that you guys can really benefit a lot from those two features. Um, we need to really move on these models. So, um, whatever design decisions you still have to make, please make them. I'm going to come around and visit with each of you and uh, kind of lay out a little plan for you guys to finish this thing up. And then starting on Monday, we're going to be doing actual drawings. So I did mention that there are three things that I want to do with you tonight. I've done two of them so far. The next one is interior walls. But I want to give you an opportunity to finish up your shell before we talk about that because there are two paths that you can take. What questions do you have?